This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Welcome to the inaugural Three Maw Bonus edition of basketball. You guys may have heard Three Maw Bonus with Curry Sexton that we did throughout football season. We've got one more of those that we plan to record here to kind of put a bow on football season. But we're actually here with former Kansas State men's basketball player Pearson McAtee now to do a basketball version of Three Maw Bonus and uh, give some expert analysis on Kansas State hoops. As I mentioned, Pearson played. For K State basketball, 2015, 2019, Pearson's a Big 12 champ, part of the uh, the 2018-19 Big 12 championship team, part of the team that went to the Elite Eight the season before that, uh, and we are so incredibly grateful to have Pearson on. Also, going to talk some Wildcat NIL. As always, such a big deal, especially this time of year, as you've got things going on with the transfer portal, player retention. You see all of the guys entering the portal, not just from Kansas State, but from across the country, and it's such a key component. Uh, right now so we'll talk a little bit of wildcat nil and we'll actually start off there we're going to dive in get pearson's thoughts on k-state men's basketball they just knocked off chicago state 62 to 55 on tuesday night in bramwich coliseum we thought the timing to start this show was probably the appropriate time this week as big 12 basketball play is getting ready to kick off this saturday as k-state hosts ucf the fun really begins now we're going to have a lot of great college basketball on for the next three months and uh, can't wait so Pearson, first of all, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, glad to have you aboard. Appreciate it, Cole. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. Excited to kind of keep this thing rolling. Though you and Curry had a lot of momentum, I'll try and live up. To that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, we're we are thrilled. I'm just glad you don't have to be out on your uh, your porch like Curry's had to be half the time we do the show to make sure he doesn't <laughs> lose signal. He, I, I have felt bad. Curry, Curry will be outside on uh, frigid nights, uh, sometimes in 30 degree temperatures, just doing the pod with us. Uh, that's how dedicated he is. I'm glad you're not having to sit outside right now. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, Pearson, let's let's just kick things off with uh, with Wildcat NIL. For folks who have not heard before, catsnil.com. Go there, check out more information, check out the membership tier program. There's something for everybody, $10 a month, $25 a month, $50. 99 etc you give you're supporting k-state student athletes and you guys are doing a lot of different great things as well with wildcat nil it's it's not just like people have this misperception it's just paying players like you guys the kansas the kansas state offensive line the beef program donating back the food using the food banks and donating back food insecurity boys and girls club etc all the great things you're doing through nonprofit acts as well but i I just want to give you the floor and maybe talk about the latest and greatest with uh, what's going on at wildcat nil yeah there's there's a lot of momentum right now obviously with transfer portal and football finishing up i know you you and curry already touched on that a lot didn't getting guys to be able to return and and obviously you know having that base going into recruiting class for next year um you know kind of continue to just expand on the excellence that we already have in all of our programs and it's not just football but obviously that's the most recent year um you know the coaches are going to get the right kits here and it's now our job to get them opportunities that they can get at other schools to a bare minimum match those opportunities and so those are such things as getting involved with businesses in the community it's getting involved with nonprofits in the community you know there are certain ways to be able to help whether it's you know our our you know beer that we have out there right now the western national bank debit card um stashly just rounding up different purchases um and then also our membership you know i think there's this notion sometimes that um you know all the, you know only this little amount's only going to go so far that's not true with k-state we've always um you know dominated by everyone coming together and being a family and being united and so i encourage you know, anyone who's interested in, in looking to support K-State and KC Athletics as they have for years, um, to just go and find something that, that's already in your everyday routine. You know, we've got a lot of different opportunities for people to get involved. And um, there's just always a, a better camaraderie, a, a better understanding of what it is and where we can take this thing when, when we've got more and more people involved. So appreciate all the supporters so far. We, we've got a lot of momentum at K-State. We've got, you know, amazing facilities. We've got, you know, it's from administration to our all of our, you know, coaches that we have, staff members. Um, now we're just going to continue to build on that with NIL and, and keeping and going to, um, you know, find great, great student athletes from around the country. Yeah, I'm curious for your thoughts on this, Pearson, because there was an arms race on the facilities front across college sports for a time period, right? And you saw all the fancy things that programs were putting in their football, their basketball facilities to get the attention of recruits and 
Kansas State has now accomplished with all the facility projects. So much of that over the last several years, a lot of it privately funded through donors. They now, kind of, you know, K-State kind of sits in a position where there, there isn't a lot from a facility standpoint you have to do. And also, so that that's a plus because NIL is kind of the new big thing, but like it also feels like NIL is kind of what's replacing that facility arms race, right, across the country. I mean, that's going to be more important to, to recruits than having a barber shop and the football facility, right? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to... Um you know, put away the work that, that John Curry had started with with fundraising for these facilities and Gene Taylor has since finished and continue to expand on. I mean, that getting to that point is what we need it. But we are in in such a great position at Case State that we don't have a hundred or multi hundred million dollar raise that we're in the middle of to go get facilities. There is this room, there is, you know, a space for NIL at Case State with our current donors, with our current you know, supporters on top of what they're already doing with the Ahern Fund. Um that exists and that is there. And and there's no more exciting time than, than to be able to pour into that because like you mentioned, that is, you know, one of the one of the number one, I'd say, amenities outside of a, a player choosing the right staff, the right fit for their playing style and, and what they want to do future um, with athletics beyond K State. I, I think that's number one. And 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 those coaches are doing a great job of getting kids who want to be here for the right reason. But once all that's figured out at the end of the day, those kids are going to want an NIL package and know that there's something here and available for them. And that's our job at Wildcat NIL is to, is to make sure that, that, you know, that our coaches and our administration can go out and land those players that fit our culture and, the, you know, they're the right people to be here. Curry brought up on the last pod, actually, uh, that we did, I think, in prep for the North Carolina State Bowl game and the Pop-Tarts Bowl, he brought up, you know, just how important NIL is to coaches like Chris Kleiman, Jerome Tang, Jeff Mitty, uh, Coach Mansfield, too, with the volleyball team, et cetera. Pete Hughes with the baseball team, arguably going to be have his best team in all likelihood at K-State for the baseball program this upcoming year. And just how important having a good NIL program like Wildcat NIL is to these coaches moving forward because they don't want to be up at night thinking about, do I have enough to, to keep my team together, right? Uh, that Those are the stresses that these coaches do not want to have to worry about. And I just want to reemphasize what you said at Pearson, because we brought it up numerous times. And I always see an argument from some people that are like, ah, if I give five, ten dollars a month, like that, that this is meant really for the big heavy hitting donors. But it really, you know, yes, there is obviously a large role with heavy hitting donors, and you can expand on this if you'd like. But as you mentioned earlier, every dollar does count and it adds up. And we have seen other programs that have made big pushes on the NIL front through smaller giving uh to the broader fan base that it has really added up. I think West Virginia doubled their NIL program just recently. I think Nebraska raised maybe 800 K in 24 hours through the broader fan base, not the heavy hitting donors. And so that's a lot of money that can add up to getting you a couple players that help you win a championship. Absolutely. And, and you're going to see a lot more, a, a big push here coming from us pretty soon and on our, you know, we like to call it a grassroots campaign side of things that that membership side of things, because it's so vitally important and it's something that, you know, as you start to add up all of those donations and contributions, it's a great base and it's something that's recurring and ongoing. And, and that's something that's going to you know, build a massive base to alleviate some of those donors that are doing so much for us right now and are going to continue to do so much. So it is a vital part. And and to go back on one of your points, you know, coaches staying up at night and I'm worried. I think Curry mentioned this on one of your prior shows, but that is almost another amenity that coaches are looking for to, to, to staying at or coming to K-State. Um, or to any school across the country. It's what are your NIL opportunities? And, you know, we're lucky at K-State to have an administration and coaches that get it and want to understand that we need that. And uh, here over the next, you know, month or two especially, and then going forward, you're going to see a lot bigger buy-in from from our administration on, on the NIL front side of things. And, you know, all of us at Wildcat NIL are really, really excited to see that come to fruition. Well, I'm excited for you guys. And I saw Gene Taylor and the Manhattan Mercury talking about how they're embracing NIL more as an athletic department and administration. We saw Chris Kleiman before the bowl game come out and talk about how they're really embracing NIL now. And they think they've they've turned over a new leaf on that side with uh, in conjunction with you guys as well at Wildcat NIL. So you can tell how important it is to Jerome Tang, to Chris Kleiman, to the administration, these coaches. There's going to be a big push, as you mentioned. So go check out catsnil.com as always to learn more information you can sign up to give there you can learn about all the different things you guys are doing events that are coming up that you may want to participate in 
or where you can just support Wildcat NIL in the general community, like going to Manhattan Brewing, you know, in Manhattan and purchasing NIL beer, where some of the proceeds for each beer sold go back to Wildcat NIL and K-State student athletes. So support companies like that. Wildcat Debit, you mentioned 10 cents every charge. So um, go to catsnil.com, check them out. Uh, but now we'll uh, we'll throw to a break. And then when we come back from break, we're going to talk K-State hoops and uh, look ahead to Big 12 play with Pearson. First, as always, we got to tell you about our friends at Home Field Apparel, homefieldapparel.com. Tons of retro gear, retro logos. Um, I, they've got 40 K-State items on their website at homefieldapparel.com. They've got over 100 different colleges to choose from as well. If you want to you know, pick some random schools like DY does on 3 Mall and rocks Hawaii rainbow shirt or Kent State or whoever you want to rock, Home Field Apparel has you covered. Um, but specifically, they have one of the largest K-State brand apparel lineups that you'll find that's out there. So go check them out. Go to homefieldapparel.com. You can score 15% off with the discount code 3 mall 23 Homefieldapparel.com, 3 mall 23 15% off. Go support them as they support us. We'll be back with Pearson to talk K-State hoops next. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. All right, before I hit you with the uh, the hard-hitting questions, Pearson, I guess since this is our first show together, we'll, we'll start off with maybe a fun one. I'm curious, what's your favorite memory in your time playing for Kansas State? What what game or what moment sticks out the most? Oh, gosh, that's that's always a hard one. Um, you know, I was fortunate to have um, a, a lot of really unique experiences at K-State. You know, I came in with... Barry Brown, Kamal Stokes, Dean Wade. I mean, a crew like that. We went through a lot of highs and lows. Um, so honestly, one of the one of the most unique moments. I'll, I'll kind of give you one that's unique, and then probably my favorite. I mean, my favorite by far has got to be Big Twelve Championship, clinching that at home um, against Oklahoma uh, senior year. I mean, th- there's no better feeling than than bringing that to, a championship to Manhattan. Um, but one of the most unique ones was probably when we made the NCAA tournament in the first four. Um, that would have been 2017. Coach Weber was kind of on the hot seat or very much on the hot seat after we got blown out with about three games to go in the regular season down in Oklahoma, lost by 30, 35. Um, the mood in that bus was just so low. And Coach came and said, we're going to come together. I don't know if I'm going to be here or not, um, but I want to fight for you guys so the seniors can go on a great front. front. We turn it around, you know, made the NCAA tournament. Coach stayed another year. Then we go Elite Eight run. Big 12 championship and the rest is uh rest is history. So making that um, honestly changed the trajectory at, at K-State for me. I was wondering, I, I figured it was either the Big 12 championship beating Oklahoma that night and how special that was because that was such a cool thing. It, it's so special to be able to clinch it on your home court. Uh, it was a really, really fun night. And I, I had wondered between that and then beating Kentucky to go on to the Elite Eight and the NCAA tournament because that was such a special night too. For sure. You know, I, I the only reason I give a nod to the Big 12, honestly, is because we were full strength that night. Yeah. You know, Dean had, had, unfortunately, we didn't really know at the time, but got hurt that game. It's what let us not, and not be able to play in, in that second back-to-back NCAA tournament. Unfortunately, he's, he's one of our really good friends. So I hated not having him. T- I mean, technically, he played that night against Kentucky. It was about four minutes, and he, you know, he, he, he was, should not have really been playing. He just powered through for us. Um, so that'd probably be the only reason we were full strength that night against Oklahoma. You guys make a final four in one of the last two years with Dean, if he's fully healthy, you think? Uh, you know, I, I, I really think that he is, he is such a difference maker. And I know Barry got a lot of the accolades on the leadership side of things. And, and you know, Kamal's a great player as well. Xavier Steed, me go down the line, Mike, a girl. Um, but, but Dean's a starter in the NBA right now for a reason. Um, people that kind of flies underneath the radar, I think, just being from St. John, Kansas, and um, just just a great dude to his core as well. I mean, he he was unguardable, and I guess that's coming a little bit of a bias since since he whipped me up and down the court for about four years straight when I had to guard him. Um, but he's uh, he's a special player, and and he he honestly made so many people around him better because he took all the focus away. Um, they had a game plan for him, and even though he may not score a bucket here or there, it was because they were you know focused on guard. So gutted for him what he had to go through those last two years right before the NCAA tournament both both times. It just terrible. But, uh, you know, there was a lot of fun moments with uh, you guys and uh, grateful for those those memories that you guys created for the fans and myself as well. And uh, 
we'll always be really appreciative of that. So now speaking of great moments and uh, memories, Jerome Tang created a lot of great memories last year in year one, taking K-State to the Elite Eight. What a fun team that was. And I almost feel like Pearson, as I'm as I'm watching this team from an entertainment perspective, comparative to last year, I almost feel like I'm doing him an injustice because I last year's team was just so unique and special with some of the highlight reel type plays with Marquise Keontae, Desi Sills going to the rim, you know, uh, Naquan Tomlin, et cetera. I, I don't know. I, I may, do you, do you fi- find yourself feeling that way ever that maybe, maybe fans are being a little bit unreasonable, including myself with, you know, just because the, the entertainment value is not quite as high because last year's team was just so fun to watch. You know, we, we got pretty spoiled last year. Um, not a lot of people knew it until it was, you know, kind of almost over or after it passed. When you have, you know, two players and and, and talent and Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel that mesh well together, you know, a guy like Marquise who just completely took over games late in the season. I mean, those are polarizing players. And, and we have similar talent on our team this year. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we... We still have dudes on this team. Um, just one of the things last year that they had, and, and I know we've talked about this a little bit already, but um, you know they just had a lot of time together last year, and they were able to mesh. And you know, as soon as they got on campus, it was that same exact roster throughout non-conference and into conference, and um, that's when you can really start to string together a lot of different wins and just that camaraderie and the ability to find each other and know where they're going to be on the court um, leads to better shots, leads to to higher make percentages, all those different things. So. I think that's really the one key component is just a little bit of, of time and um, that same group that's playing together that we're missing this year. Well, I was going to say, Pearson, and, and I guess I should preface all of this by just stating they're 10 and 3. All right. They they did, they have two quad one wins. Now, Providence, unfortunately, lost tonight, actually, to Seton Hall by four, and it looks like they might have lost Bryce, Bryce Hopkins to a pretty significant injury. He got carried off the court. So, hope the best for him. That could impact their season. But has got wins over Villanova and Providence on a neutral court against the Friars, arguably two better wins than K-State had last year in the non-con. Now, they have a couple more losses. I think we would all attest they probably played a little bit harder of a schedule. USC is not as good as we thought, but that's still a hard team to play right out of the gate, especially with all the different challenges this team's went through. So they're 10-3. and three. It's not like it's been a disastrous non-con, but there's been some close calls, obviously, against low major opponents, just like Chicago State on Tuesday night. And I guess to start to the point you just made, how much do you think it's impacted this team that two of your key guys you were going to be counting on? Obviously, the Naquan Tomlin situation, who may have been your best player on this team, your most talented player, never playing a minute for this team, going through all of that. And then the Quez Glover stuff, you you lose him right before the season after the exhibition game, a guy you're going to count on in the guard rotation. And then he's about ready to come back and unfortunately re-aggravates his knee after just practicing a few days with these guys. How much does that impact him? Oh, it's a lot of impact. And it even goes further than that. You know, Day-Day Ames getting suspended and having to miss one game. And then you've got, you know, a couple other little little bugs here and there throughout the non-conference. I mean, last night, it was RJ and Jarrell. Jarrell, yeah. but I mean, guys that have been playing all year, there's, there's no minutes. Now, the guy like Tosh Manning stands up and he's there, you know, local kid who's obviously worked his tail off doing the right things. I love Coach Singh's comment about him wanting to play on scout, just a total unselfish move. And, you know, guys like that are going to make a difference in the long run. Unfortunately, we just have to get the same crew in there. And no matter who that crew is, now we have a really good idea of who it's going to be, I think. And it's just getting those minutes together, whether that's, you know, in practice, out on the court. Um, You know, typically you see teams really go through about an eight-man, maybe even sometimes seven-man rotation when they get to conference. I don't know if we're going to have that same consistency. I think there's going to be an eighth, a ninth, a ten guy that may get popped in every once in a while. Um, hopefully, it's not due to any injuries, but just with playing styles and being consistent and who meshes with who or who who you know basically comes up and is a matchup problem for the other team. So it's going to be a little bit of a different. I mean, I hate to use the term hodgepodge, but it, it's going to be different than that typical seven to eight man rotation. We're just going to have to be deeper and. And Coach obviously showed that last night with playing Taj a lot, Dorian Finister getting out there early. Um, that's just the way it's going to be this year. They're going to have to fight to get those wins with a lot of depth. I was going to say, it feels like it's it's kind of a different lineup of guys each night that might pop for you. We saw Michaela Rich give them meaningful minutes for a couple different games. Love the energy that he can bring to the table. Love what Taj Manning brought after not playing for, what, t- he, he started the first couple of games and then 
hardly played over the last 10, 11. And then he just pops right in there and gives him an instant lift last night. Spark busted his rear end defensively, got after it on the glass as well. And just played with a ton of energy out there and gave him a lift. And hopefully maybe, you know, gives like, some of these other guys a little bit of a wake up call um, and inspires them and, and gets the other guys going that maybe coach Tang was trying to send a message to, but you mentioned it earlier, this team, has talent they have dudes do you think they have enough talent to be an ncaa tournament team oh absolutely without a doubt um you know we, we have skilled players i mean arthur kaluma is is a consistent score on and, and rebounder to the likes of keontae johnson i mean i know keontae's in the league right now and that's a high ceiling but arthur kaluma you know coming from creating the lead eight run he's got that experience too um i'll be interested to see how he develops kind of as a leader um you know it, it's harder as an as an off guard or you know, kind of semi big man, that kind of four or five position stretch four, um, to be a leader because you're you're not dominating the game with the ball, you know, like most point guards are. So I know Tyler Perry's going to have to step up. I know we we're hoping to get Quez back to kind of be a, a two headed monster uh, or two headed snake, as, as a lot of coaches like to call him, um, going into conference. But I think Art's going to really have to step up. We've seen that, you know, those flashes from Cam Carter. Um, we have a lot of talent on this team and, and I know we haven't had the greatest shooting performances either, but if coach Tang, if I've learned anything, if coach Tang says one thing, I, I'm going to believe I'm, I'm going to wait to see that, see it come to fruition, uh, after everything that he proved last year. So if he still believes that we've got a team that can shoot the ball well, it's just about getting these guys reps together. That'll increase that confidence. So I'll get better shots. Um, it's going to, you know, end up with the ball in the basket a lot more often than it was here in, the, in kind of the middle of the middle to end of non-conference games. Do you think they're getting good enough looks, Pearson, when you watch them play? Uh, do you think they're getting enough open looks at, or do you think they're maybe forcing some shots and maybe that's causing some of the lower shooting percentages? I think there's definitely times where we've seen them, you know, maybe pushed a little bit more. I think last year's team and kind of the difference between that is we we're okay with turning over the ball high high clip last year because we were going to be making those plays to get to that perfect shot. So we're going to shoot a lot higher percentages of shots. I think our turnovers haven't been as high this year, but part of that is because maybe guys have shot a little bit out of turn or not made that extra pass or, you know, not swung the ball one or two more times. So I think a little bit more than last year, um, you know, we're not shooting the best shots, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm okay with a lower turnover margin. And um, I know that these guys are going to get it turned around here come conference season. Well, on the topic of shooting, I mean, they're they're 30% from three right now. That's 287th in the country. But they've also had games where they've they've really flashed and gotten hot from three. And it feels like that's going to happen at some point. They're going to hit a stretch. Remember the games down in Texas, Baylor last year, where they just caught fire and couldn't miss. And it feels like they have the capability to do that. But a lot of that is contingent on Tyler Perry. And Tyler was a, a career 41% three-point shooter in his two years at North Texas on a high volume of three-point attempts coming into Kansas State. Even if you go back to his days at Coffee Mill Community College, Pierce said he was a 42% three-point shooter. So I think it's over 700, 800 three-point attempts. You know, he's been a 41, 42% three-point shooter in his career. He's shooting 31% from three this year. Over his last 10 games, he's 25% from beyond the arc. Do you do you get the sense maybe he's he's just pressing or still adjusting to his role of kind of being the lead point guard in this system? Maybe at North Texas he was a little bit more off the ball and maybe he's not getting quite as good a looks as or or maybe it's just he's pressing at this point. And when you watch him play, do you think he's he's kind of putting too much on his own shoulders and maybe pressing? I, I don't know if it would be pressing. I think it's definitely a role change, though, and you mentioned that. I mean, if you think about it, having Quez come in here this summer and all of, you know, all practice, they're expected to be able to feed off of each other and, you know, not have him dominate the ball the whole time, kind of like Marquise did last year. Like, different players have different styles, and it's hard to say about, you know, TP without having to really watch him at North Texas or Coffee Bill, but I would assume he had another guard or two that were able to kind of handle and, and hold that tempo and kind of be a leader um, and I think he was expecting that with Quez this year. So I think it's a little bit of a role adjustment. He knows he's a good shooter. Um, he knows he's getting great looks. And so, um, you know, maybe in the back of his mind, he's, he's still adjusting a little bit to that role change. But obviously with the news here with, with Quez recently and with the gauntlet of whatever, you know, every single Big 12 schedule is always a gauntlet. With that coming forward, he's, he's going to have to figure out pretty quickly what that role is going to be and, and, you know, when to, when to take and make those shots. So 
I have no issues. He's a winner. He's a seasoned guard. He's going to figure it out. But it's definitely been a different role than I think he thought it was going to be um, with just, you know, Quez not being available. To that point, it, it does put more on the shoulders of a guy like Day Day Ames, talented freshman guard, top 75 recruit that came into Kansas State. They played him a significant amount of minutes, but maybe just how instrumental do you think Day Day's development over Big 12 play and what he's done in the non con as well will be for this team's success? You know, it'll, it, it's going to be huge. I, I'd argue that Cam Carter is going to be even larger, just being a consistent presence for us. We're going to need Cam night at, night out more than we're having day day. But to win those tough games, to have an X factor like we saw Desi Sills last year, to basically won us that KU game, you're going to need guys like that to step up. And day day, I think, is going to be one of the guys that that is going to shine and have that that shooting performance, that game that we need that gets us you know over the hump for a, for a tough road conference game or maybe a, a home conference game that we're supposed to win that we came out a little bit sluggish he's going to be that guy that um is going to help alleviate cam and art and and you know guys like that that are supposed to be scoring consistently night overnight well k-state tips big 12 playoff on saturday in bramlage coliseum at 5 p.m against ucf and i'm not going to ask you specifically for a breakdown on the ucf game candidly pearson i haven't seen ucf play i've watched a lot of big 12 games but I have not seen what UCF brings to the table yet this year. I'm sure it'll be a grind as well, just like most of these Big 12 games will be. Ten teams in the top 51 of the net rankings in the Big 12 currently as we sit Houston and BYU number one and number two, respectively. Two new Big 12 newcomers that uh, are number one and number two in the net rankings across the country. But I guess I'll just ask you generically high level what you would like to see from this team over the next couple of weeks, biggest improvement areas, what you would like to really see from them to feel good about this team making a run in March. Yeah, I think probably one of the biggest things on the offensive side of things is just seeing Cam and Art, you know, really assert themselves in that role. Um, that's not necessarily pressing for shots, not doing different things. I mean, from a leadership perspective, and I mean, for when they get the ball in their spot where it's their bread and butter, it's their comfort level, whether that's on the wing, in transition, taking advantages of those spots um, when you're getting mismatches. I think that's something we did a really good job of last year was getting out, pushing, push, pushing the tempo. We were, you know, extraordinary in transition. And I think there's a couple of guys that are really good transition. There's a couple of guys where, you know, they can push it up, but we may need to swing it back up top and, and go into some sort of play or, um, you know, whatever we're going into. I, I really think Cam and, and Art are going to be huge for that perspective. Um, for the team in general over the next couple of weeks, it's going to be, I'm really excited and interested to see how it's going to go. You know, this is the first time we've had the Big 12 where, you know, we've got new teams in here. You're not playing everybody twice throughout the season. You know, when you always play someone a second time after losing or beating them, it's always a tougher matchup. You know, we're only going to see some of these teams, you know, sometimes it'll just be once. It might it might be on the road. It might be on. There's so many different styles and structures. I'll be interested to see how we, you know, how we respond to, you know, a loss or maybe, you know, back-to-back losses in conference play. I don't want to wish that upon, you know, any of our teams, but that's when you really find out about, you know, what's what a team is made of is when someone is able to scheme against them and figure something out. The Big 12 is a copycat league and teams are going to start defending and guarding and throwing out similar systems that they find that it works against our offense and against our players. So I'll be really interested to see how they respond, um, you know, to some of that adversity gear to, to start Big 12. Definitely. And, uh, man, it gets fun once Big 12 play starts because your uh, your weeknights get filled up with a lot of great basketball. If you're looking for something to do on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, you usually got a good Big 12 game that's going to be on TV. And as the league continues to expand and goes to 16 next year, you're going to have probably games on Thursday nights too when the, uh, the Pac-12 traditionally plays. So, Looking forward to it. Looking forward to Big 12 play tipping off. Uh, Pearson, appreciate you so much for doing the show with us. We'll probably do this maybe every other week. We'll figure out that cadence. We'll see how things are going, but uh, we'll do several of these shows, get Pearson's thoughts as uh, the season continues to unroll. We tip off Big 12 play and kind of recap where K-State basketball is and give you updates on Wildcat NIL every other week or so. So, Pearson, appreciate you a great deal. Appreciate what what all you do and what Pearson, what Curry does over at Wildcat and L. Ryan and all the others, great K-Staters that are putting in a ton of time and effort to help support K-State student athletes. So thank you, Pearson. Yeah, thanks, Cole. Excited to be on here with you. And hopefully the next time we talk, we're uh, we're still undefeated in, in conference with Big 12. And, and you know, we're talking about how, how wrong a lot of our thoughts were about how this team may, may shoot and is coming together compared to last year. So 
Um, I, I'm really excited to see to see this team grow and, and to see how they handle uh, Big 12 conference play because it's it's the hardest conference in the country. There's no doubt there. I'd love to look like an idiot, Pearson, and uh, have any doubts put to uh, put to, put out there because you know th- this team surprised us last year. I mean, we weren't. You know, they, they went on the road to Texas and Baylor and knocked off two top 15, top 10 teams in the country, and that kind of spurred the season onward. And I'd love for this team to surprise us again and, and catch a hot streak here and really get things going and uh, have another fun ride of basketball season. So appreciate it, Pearson. And, hey, if that happens, we'll probably be doing a few more of these shows, uh, you know, just to, to ride the momentum in the hot wave. So Sounds appreciate good. it. Appreciate it. Appreciate all of you guys listening to to 3 Mall Bonus and 3 Mall on KCSN. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you again to our sponsors and supporters, 360 Vodka, the Holiday Distillery. Get your Ben Holiday bottled in Bon Bourbon, 360 Vodka, and go pick up your home field apparel, K-State gear at homefieldapparel.com.